This is a Raspberry Pi. With it, you can control your 3D printer from anywhere and do other cool things like monitor your print and make cool time-lapse videos. The only drawback is it requires some programming knowledge and there is a lot of setup and configuring in order to make it work properly. This is the Mintion Beagle Print. It does all the same things that OctoPrint and Raspberry Pi can do without any of the setup. As a matter of fact, this time lapse right here was made, and all I had to do was plug the camera into the 3D printer and log into the app. So let's take a look at the Beagle Print camera today and see if it is just as good or even better than a Raspberry Pi with OctoPrint. Okay, so we are looking at the Mintion Beagle camera. I'm going to go ahead and unbox it. Big thanks to Mintion for providing this evaluation unit for me to make this video. We're going to see what they offer, uh, how well the setup goes, and how well it works. Let me see how I open this here. Oh, this guy's big. So this is the camera. Looks like we got maybe a power cord. This is probably the power cord because it's USB-C. And then this may be the uh, control. SIM card removal tool. Charger. Power supply, whatever you want to call it. And some instructions. Alright, after a quick look at the instructions here, we do have the USB-C cable is for powering up the camera. This micro USB is supposed to be for connecting to your 3D printer. Um, I'm not sure what anybody else's experience is, but all of my 3D printers use mini USB, not micro USB, but I've got plenty of mini USB cables around, so I don't really need to worry about that. And this is just to power the camera. The little SIM card removal tool is for pushing the reset button on the camera in case there's any issues and I'm assuming that's where the reset button is. I'm not sure. Hopefully I won't need to use it. So first things first, let's go ahead and set up this camera. Okay, here's the setup, pretty straightforward. The black cable is the power and the blue cable is the USB that goes into my printer. I am going to try to use this on a Soval SV01. It's a really good printer. If you're interested, I will leave a link up in the card somewhere that will uh, guide you to a uh, review for this printer. Um, after plugging in the camera, it already told me that it is ready for AP configuration. So at this point, you want to refer to this QR code right here with your phone and it takes you to the Mintion.net website. I guess it would help if I would show you. And click on App Store download for, uh, for you know the App Store that applies to you. Okay, once downloaded you can open the app. And it looks like it wants you to create a, an, an account. Once you register, it sends you a code that you use to verify that your email address is legitimate. To finish creating your account, you enter that code plus a password that of your choosing. Once you create your account, you are prompted to log in. And it takes you to this screen here. You go to AP Configuration, it tells you to plug in everything, which I've already done. 
And now you have to enter your Wi-Fi credentials. It's now instructing me to find my camera's Wi-Fi hotspot. So I have to go to my settings and my Wi-Fi settings and then enter their super secret password of 01234567 and now it's connecting to the Wi-Fi hotspot of my camera click next and now we wait for it to do its thing Okay, so the camera just told me that it is successfully connected to my Wi-Fi network. Once that's complete, click the confirm button. And I guess we're ready to go. Um, that is not the view from my camera. I don't have my printer turned on yet, so let's do that first. I generally don't leave my printers on because the fans are so loud on them. So I'm going to try clicking on the picture of the view and so now you can see what the camera sees. If I put my hand here in front of the camera, there it is. So I'm going to try to connect to my printer. Okay, I'm pretty sure it just connected. Uh, let me see if I can control my printer from this camera now. There it goes. Uh, let's see here. Let's move the Y axis. Pretty sure you can see that. Okay. So that was relatively painless. I'm going to figure out how to get print files onto this camera and um, if that's the case I mean this is leaps and bounds easier than setting up a Raspberry Pi I actually have a Raspberry Pi that I have set up for this exact printer and um, you have to program the Pi and you know there's a lot of setup involved Whereas, so far with this guy, all I had to do was plug it in and connect it. So, um, it's looking pretty promising. But now what we will do is, grab a, I'll grab a file, I don't know, maybe I'll just grab a Benchy file or something, and figure out how to put it on the app, and then execute it from the app, and then we will see how well the time-lapse feature works. One thing I did notice um, is inside the device here, uh, under settings, it, you do probably want to set up your particular printer. For example, mine is not an Ender, it's a Soval SV01, which isn't in their list of printer brands. Um, they do have the, the Voxlab, Aquila, your Anticubic, your Elegoo ones, Prusa, um, so they have some good ones in here, but they don't have a really big list. It shouldn't matter, um, because my printer is based on the Ender, so all I have to do is change my print size from what it has here to 280, 280 by 240 by 300 and save that and for some reason it won't let me go up to 300 on the height but I usually don't go up to 300 anyway on my prints so I, maybe not that big of a deal I don't know some of the other features on this um, so you this is tells you how much time you have left how fast you're going you can turn on and off your cameras and your videos your pictures and your videos um, you can control your temperature of your nozzle and your heat bed on this screen. You can control the movement on this screen. 
This is your list of files that you have available to print, and this would be the list of finished videos once they've completed recording. We have other settings here. Um, these are settings that I've already uh, established when I connected the printer, or when I connected the printer to the camera and the camera to my Wi-Fi setting. So we have Wi-Fi, our normal record settings. Nope, hold on. Our normal record settings. With this toggle, it has the camera record every time you print. Time lapse settings. You can set your intervals. You can set your retracting speeds and distance. So the way that this works to give you a nice smooth time lapse is between every level, every layer that is printed, the nozzle will move up and out of the way, out of the field of view of the camera. It takes a picture and then it comes back, prints another layer, then moves out of the way. And it does that for each layer so it appears that the print is just growing out of the build plate. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice a Benchy and figure out how to get it onto the app and then execute it from the app and we'll see how it goes on the printer. As you can see here, I sliced my Benchy and saved it to my PC and then I navigated to the IP address of of the Beagle Print camera and from this IP address I could access the same interface that I would have on my phone for this camera. I dropped the sliced file into the printable files list tab on the camera interface. I pressed print and I let the printer do its thing. It should be noted that I did have to switch over to my Creality Ender 3 Pro because even though the Beagle Print camera would connect with my Soval SVO1, it was not a supported printer and so it just was not behaving properly, being controlled by the Beagle Print. So here's a time lapse of that Benchy print as recorded by the Beagle Print camera. As you can see, I aimed the camera at the wrong location, but it did print uh, very well. The transitions between each layer is very smooth and uh, it makes a very good time-lapse video. If you compare it to the way I used to record my time-lapses with the GoPro camera, you can see with the GoPro it's very jittery because the GoPro is just taking a picture every 10 seconds no matter where the position of the extruder is or the y-axis for that matter and so the time-lapse shows up as very jittery. After I got that first print out of the way, I went ahead and printed my second print, which you saw at the beginning of this video. And then after repositioning the camera a couple times to try to get the best vantage point, I tried a third print here in silver, and I feel like this one has turned out the best so far. I really like how smooth the time lapse is and how the build plate and the extruder go back to the exact same position for each picture and so it appears that the print is just growing out of the build plate. So, so far I've been very impressed with this little Mintian Beagle Print camera. It does everything they claim it does and it does it with the ease that they claim it has. So just as a quick recap, with this camera you can have it out of the box and connected to your printer and signed up and working within five minutes. With this you can monitor and control your 3D printer from anywhere where you have a cell phone connection as well as from any computer in your house and it flawlessly takes time-lapse videos of your 3D prints that you can share with family and friends, put them in your YouTube videos, whatever you want to do. It is all plug and play and there's no real configuration or programming needed to get this working which gives this Mintian Beagle Print camera a great advantage over the Raspberry Pi slash OctoPrint solutions that we have been using to be able to have the same capabilities. Now this doesn't come without any drawbacks. Uh, there are a couple of drawbacks with this and I'd like to point them out just for the sake of transparency. First of all, the design is not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Uh, this is appears to be a lot bigger than it needs to be, and I think it's just because they want to have this cute little beagle design 
At first I thought maybe these little black dots were some sensors and things, and they're not. They're just eyes because it wants to uh, kind of have the appearance of a beagle looking over your prints. The video quality is probably going to be the largest drawback with this device. With this device you are stuck with the camera that they provide with the whole unit, and the camera on this isn't that great. It is a 1080p camera, but as you can see in some of the video footage that I've already shared in this video, it is highly compressed and it has lots of artifacts and there is a timestamp up in the corner that you can't seem to turn off and you can easily crop that out, but for the most part the video quality isn't the best. If you want to share your time-lapse videos with your friends and family off of your phone, that's totally fine, but I made a point to make sure to show all of these time lapses that I took in full resolution, full screen, so you, if you're watching this on your TV, you can see the type of quality that you can expect from this device. It's not horrible, don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking it, I'm not saying that this is a deal breaker. I'm just saying that as a person that's used to dealing with true 1080p or even 4K content, there's going to be a noticeable downgrade in quality when you're using this camera. And the only other minor drawback is that I have not found a way to set a static IP address on this. And so when you access this device through your web browser, you will need to know the IP address. And you can access or you can obtain the IP address by going through the settings page on the app on your phone and finding what the IP address that has been assigned by your router. But anytime you power this off and power it back on, it's going to be assigned a new IP address from your router. And so it would be nice to be able to assign this a static IP address so you could just bookmark it in your browser so you could jump back to it whenever you want and not have to worry about whether or not you've rebooted it since the last time you looked at it. So the question is, would I buy this instead of a Raspberry Pi? And I think my answer is yes. And here's the reason why. At this point in history, which is May 2022, a good Raspberry Pi is hard to find, and when you find them, they're very expensive due to the chip shortage and the supply chain issues and everything else. Once you buy a Raspberry Pi, and then you buy a camera and an interface for the camera to go, and then you put in the time to configure or program the Raspberry Pi with OctoPrint, you've spent qu quite a large amount of time and money getting something with the functionality that this provides for a single affordable price. So if you're not interested in learning how to use a Raspberry Pi or how to or how to program one or how to configure one or how to get your particular webcam working with that piece of hardware or anything, this Beagle Print camera is an all-in-one solution that is pretty much plug and play, very easy to understand. I think it's a great product and I think you'd like it too. So if you are interested in getting your own Beagle Print camera from Mintian, I will leave a link down in the description below, and I will also provide a coupon code that you can use to get a discount on your own Beagle Print. So big thanks to Mintian for providing that code for us to use and for providing me this camera to review for you guys. And big thanks to you for sticking around to this point. If you like these types of review videos, please consider subscribing to my channel. And go ahead, if you wouldn't mind, and give this video a like. And comment down below what you think about this product. I appreciate all interactions with my channel, and I appreciate you guys for watching. Once again, my name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.